a system. That is when you prove that active management makes sense. Walk us through this, madame. Well, I'll tell you the most interesting thing about this. This is the best opportunity. You know, if, if you actually are just trending, you can't trade to really make it. So I look at volatility as my friend and not as my enemy. The other thing that, that is the difference is pre the recession, you could actually work on a micro level and look, you know, within a specific sector. Post the recession, you must put a macro overlay in there and in the sense of really understanding the impact. We started to see in our spending pulse, which is really all retail spending, not just our spending, it. right, at MasterCard. Um, um, but Damn. That's Damn. all right. We'll take that. But, uh, but uh, the, the interesting thing is we saw 18 months ago China starting to slow in their spending. And that 18 months ago indicator that we gave to our clients gave them the understanding of when you can look at the markets that are going to be negatively impacted by that. And from that, then you can start to readjust your portfolio. All right, Fab, you have said 11,000 hedge fund managers. There are too many in the system. Is this the year when that gets realized and in 2016 are we going to see that number drop significantly? I think you'll continue to see new people wanting, you know, show up with a, a dollar and a dream. You go to Kinko's, you get a business card printed up, and you're a hedge fund manager. Um, and part of that was, you know, the waves of layoffs at the, you know, it, within, within the financial services space where uh, where people made that transition but yes i think for a lot of funds it's going to be a challenge and small funds and big ones uh you know one of the funds run by alan howard you know, whom i respect it's going to be another two percent year i don't think uh, brevin howard has had you know above three percent since you know this decade i mean it's you know it's getting it's getting a little long in the tooth well, I think so as much as we hear about challenge how challenged hedge funds are aren't funds on net inflowing Aren't well, they still gaining money? They overall? are. We've just had this very odd period of several years where the hedge fund industry overall has underperformed the S&P on several bases. Even if you look through the 10-year period, it's looked really bad. But people have been continuing to just dump money into hedge funds. And finally, this year, it looks like we're kind of cresting over that hump and inflows are slowing down really dramatically. And I would argue it's going to be good for the industry to kind of get a little smaller, to shake out... <laughs> the weaker players, and for people who are not getting a bang for their fees to kind of go elsewhere. And I think ultimately that's going to be good because there are too many funds. But I, Fab, the funds who are getting the big inflows now, it's a diversification play. If you're talking about Citadel or Millennium, these are the opposite of single strategy. Bill Ackman or David Einhorn have four positions on, you know, maybe six or seven. So you are making very concentrated bets. Millennium's got about 80 teams at this point. Right. And you're, what you're finding is that these teams that are, uh, you know, the outfits that are very diversified, a lot of them are having a harder time with that. Izzy Englander, you know, and his stat Arby kind of world is, continues to just grind it out. It's probably one of the best funds in the world. But when you look at the, uh, uh, what, you know, when, when you look at the average guys, way too many of them have also been lazy and don't belong in the industry. And meaning by that, I mean... Uh, this is Sarah you know, loves Sarah, to talk Sarah, about. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> let's look at an ETF. Uh, the Guru ETF just pulls the largest positions out. Right. That, you know, this is just a simple kind of brain dead way of looking at uh, e ETF way. Excuse me. Let me refinance that. Uh, let me uh, <laughs> restate that. Uh, you know, and it's 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 getting slaughtered. All this is doing is taking the largest positions in the world in in the hedge fund world and slapping them together into a single ETF. And it's down double digits because the reality is, if you're in these crowded trades, if you're not doing your own original research, if you're not thinking independently, and you know, this being Christmas, you could recommend the Big Short, great flick, and Fantastic. thinking independently matters and having a thinking outside the box matters and if you're going to be following what everybody else does on their 10 K's and Q's you're going to get slaughtered and that's what's been happening people crowded positions well, no doubt about it. But I also think it's, again, thinking about where you should have been. Where was their opportunity? You could absolutely see that the emerging markets were slowing down. So therefore, what does that mean? Less demand for oil. But you could see also that there was no doubt that we were continuing to pump more and more oil. But who does that benefit? That benefits, obviously, cons consumers. Well, why is the U.S. doing well? Well, 70% of our GDP is consumer spending. So therefore, you get this gasoline savings dividend, which is a thousand and fifty four dollars per consumer which seventy two cents of each dollar is being spent there you go so readjust your portfolio to reflect that you make it sound so easy 
Well, it, you know, <laughs> I think the thing is, is people are over confusing because they get so micro so quickly. I must look at this trade versus this trade rather than sitting there and saying, what is the world saying to us in the first place? Right. And then how do we then go and execute that position? Well, I think a lot of funds become a victim of their own success. They get so big. And by the time they're huge and you read about them in the newspaper and you read about the fund manager buying a $60 million house and buying the Mets or whatever it is, you have missed your window to get in and achieve the sort of best period, the golden period in that fund manager's career. That, it, it, but hold on, in, 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 in their defense, but Fabio, there is a mismatch. Hedge fund managers who raised money in the last five years were forced to give very short-term liquidity and give terms to their investors they didn't want. So even those who are right, who are fundamentally negative on the economy, capitulated six to ten months ago and got long because they were getting carried out and now they're screwed. Right. No one's going to redeem a fund that's making money though so it doesn't matter what liquidity you give to them. The reality oh, is... Oh, you are smarty pants.